Hi, today I'm going to introduce mask decomposition, which is a framework proposed by us to eliminate light leaking in probe-based GI systems. This presentation will be separated into four parts. We will firstly introduce the basic concept of light leaking and uh, several existing approaches to address light leaking. Then, we'll describe our mask decomposition framework in detail. The mask decomposition framework includes uh, offline baking and real-time rendering, and we'll describe them in two dedicated parts. Finally, we will show results random by our approach and compare it to the original leaking GI. So what is light leaking? Well, light leaking is a long-standing seeding artifact that exists in almost all probe-based GI systems. It exists because the traditional probe-based GI systems assume that the light data changes slowly between probes, so the light field can be well reconstructed by interpolating probes nearby. But this is not often the case. As you can see from these two pictures, we have two sides of the house roof that have very different lighting condition. The upper side is fully illuminated by the sun, while the downside is in shadow and it's dark and it should not be illuminated. But our renderer does not know that, and it simply sets the global illumination by interpolating probes on each side of the roof causing light data above the roof being used by sitting points below the roof. It looks like lighting is leaking from the roof from the upside to the downside, and that's, that's how the name light leaking comes from. So we can see from the example that the light leaking happens because props are interpolated in a wrong way, that is, the invisible props should not be sampled. And it is obvious that such scene structure should be considered by the renderer when the renderer is reconstructing the light field from such props. So how to pass such scene information to the renderer? Well, the most simple and intuitive solution is to manually separate props into different volumes. And uh, this is what we currently do in our game projects. For example, if we need to build one scene with multiple indoor rooms, then we can use bounding boxes to warp the space for each room. And for each bounding box, we can bake one prop grid and use that prop grid to set up objects in the bounding box. This works, but Manually placing bounding boxes around the scene is a time-consuming and a boring task for artists, and it is very easy to get wrong. For example, if you change the scene structure but forget to update the corresponding bounding box, then you'll get some very strange lighting artifacts that it's very hard to, to indicate what, what is going wrong, and it's very hard to debug it. Another way of addressing light data, light leaking, is to encode some form of visible distance in probes, so the renderer can decide whether to use the prop data or not by performing some desk tests. One typical implementation is the RTSGI framework proposed by NVIDIA. They use one cube map for every prop to record the scene depth from the prop position. So the renderer can sample the, the scene data, the depth data for the prop, and compare it with the real distance to the prop to determine whether the, the, the prop is in, it should, will be discarded. This is a clear and a flexible solution that even supports structural changes at the runtime. But unfortunately, the runtime cost is unaffordable for mobile devices so that it cannot be used in all projects. 
This drives us to investigate a new approach that eliminates light leaking automatically so that we do not need to place bounding boxes around the scene. The approach should also not bring too much rendering overheads so that it can be used on mobile devices. With these goals in mind, we present mask decomposition framework that can be used to eliminate light leaking for any prop-based GI systems. The mask decomposition requires baking additional data when baking lights. The baked data will then be used to shade global illumination. First, so firstly, let's talk about the baking phase. The baking phase generates prop volumes, mask maps, and mask volumes used by the runtime global illumination framework to correctly shading global illuminations for objects. The baking phase contains three steps, and we will describe each step in the following slides. The first step in mask baking is to divide the light probes into several groups so that every two probes in the same group is visible to each other. In other words, the group is convex. In practice, we firstly randomly choose one free group probe in the scene and assign one group to it. Then, we will try to dilate the group to include its adjacent props, so long as the group can still be convex. This process is repeated until no more probe can be added to that group. Then, we will choose another free probe and repeat the home process until there is no free probes in the scene. This picture shows the visualization of groups in Houdini. Note that for most things, the partition solution is not unique. It depends on how you choose the first prop and how you dilate groups. So after props are partitioned into groups, we can now assign masks to the groups. As you can see from the right picture, each group should have one mask value that is different from its adjacent groups, but non-adjacent groups may share the same mask value. The maximum number of required mask value is always 8, so that each of 8 probes in the same cell can have one different mask value. However, in most cases, only three to four mask values are sufficient to model the home scene structure. So after mask values are assigned for each group, we then merge groups with the same mask value into one sub-volume. So instead of having one uniform volume for all probes, we now have multiple volume textures for probes. If the subvolume is not a box shape, we add padding probes to it. Such, such padding probes will contribute no light when being interpolated. Now we have partition probes into subvolumes. The next step is for every shading point, determine which set of subvolumes is visible to the shading point. So we provide different solutions for static objects and dynamic objects. For static objects, we use mask max to record the visibility of subvolumes from the current shading point. The mask maps are similar to light maps used in Unreal Engine. They can be baked by casting rays from the current shading point to eight adjacent probes around the shading point to calculate the average visibility of one specific subvolume. This is what a mask map looks like in Unreal Engine 4. In this example, we only use two subvolumes and use red and green color to represent the weights of the two subvolumes. 
You can see that some pictures at the floor can see both subvolumes, trust they appear in yellow color. Then, for dynamic objects, baking mask map is no longer applicable. We instead baking a dense mask volume for the scene, so that every position in the scene can get its mask value by interpolating the, the, the mask volume using its own position. The mask volume has four times resolution than the probe volume, so it is very big sized. In order to reduce its data size, we divide volumes into fixed sized blocks and then merge blocks with similar data into one block and use another indirection texture to index the block in the volume. This reduces the size of the volume to only 10% of its original size, making it affordable for mobile devices. So after we baked prop subvolumes, mass maps, and mass volumes, we now need to reconstruct the light field at real time by sampling such volumes. Reconstructing light field at runtime is pretty straightforward. We first need to read mask values from mask maps for static objects or mask volumes for dynamic objects. We then need to sample subvolumes and multiply the subvolume data with the corresponding mask weight. As we have shown before, probes grouped in invisible subvolumes will get a mask weight zero, trust contributes no light to the final rendering results, preventing light leaking. We can do further by avoiding sampling the probe subvolume if the corresponding weight is zero or close to zero. In practice, every sitting point will only be visible to only one or two subvolumes. So adopting this optimization significantly reduces the sitting time, making the sitting time comparable to its original leaking GI. So here is the result of our mask decomposition framework. First is the light leaking elimination for static objects. In this example, both pictures are rendered in Unreal Engine 4. The left picture is rendered with the built-in prop GI pipeline, which does not address light leaking. And the right picture is rendered with the same GI pipeline, but integrated with all mask GI framework. You can see from the pictures that the light leaking is well addressed in all framework. These two pictures compare the rendering result for dynamic objects. In this sponsor scene, we place several spheres, boxes, and cylinders, and mark them as dynamic, so no mask map will be baked for them. We can see that the original leaking GI has a natural bright area in the white sphere on the left of the second floor. This is caused by light leaking from the outside of the left wall. You may also notice that the left wall on the second floor is brighter than it should be. Such artifacts do not appear in our approach, shown by the right picture. The last thing I want to talk about is the performance. This table shows the rendering time comparison between the original leaking GI, visibility GI, and our approach. Visibility GI can well address the light leaking for any objects and dynamic lights, but it doubles the rendering time for GI pass, which is not acceptable for mobile devices. Instead, our approach addresses light leaking with about 20% extra rendering time compared to the original leaking GI. We think such rendering overhead is acceptable for most cases. That's all of our presentation. Thank you for your attention.